Let me tell you about this a little bit. There's seven levels of brain function. Most people are what we call trapped in either first, second, or third circuit. They never move beyond the third circuit. And it's very interesting because the social structure in the Western world, if you do not pay attention and know who you are, will lock you into it. Okay, the African race is actually the foundation for the economic system in America. So you have to understand how awesome that is. So every time you drive downtown, you see these big buildings, etc., they are built on your back. How can somebody tell you that you don't have money to do it what you want to when you're actually the foundation for which the buildings stand? So do not accept this, but what we have not mastered is accountability and appreciation for what we have. Because one absolute universal law is that whatever you focus on expands, and whatever you appreciate will be multiplied and given double unto you. So it is a travesty when we begin to go up and down the streets and see that we do not respect and honor what we have. Because when you do that, it automatically must double. That is a universal, absolute law. So there are many things that are happening with us that truly are of our own creation. And I think it's very important that we begin to pull in our energies, tunnel in, and really begin to examine how much discomfort, lack, and limitation is really of our own creation, not of anybody else's. It's very important that you give all power to yourself and stop disseminating it to any particular race of person to any particular institution, to any type of political science or the lack of an educational, none of that has anything to do with whether you're going to actualize your God or God essence. Uh, I brought some things here, and there's one uh, book that I, I um, obviously left at home, but it, it's no problem. Uh, we have a three-volume set here. Well, first of all, let me just go back to just get you hooked up. Seven circuits. First circuit is brain stem. It is equivalent to the reptilian brain. Now, one of the things that is known by zoologists and basic biologists is that when an ovum is fertilized, okay, on this planet, everything starts out the same. Okay, it gets heavy because all of, quote, the alchemical sciences now start, are brought into this because there are numbers that we are honoring that really don't exist, okay? There are uh, states of existence that we get locked into that really are only to be transitory. So we have to begin to start paying, paying very, very close attention. But the point being is that, first of all, brain stem activity is the same as reptilian brain. Okay? Now, if you pay any attention to the animals, and they're wonderful teachers because the animals are here on this planet to teach us the solution to any problem we might have. This is why the Native American Indians were so awesome and had the answers to solutions. And it's very interesting as to their unwillingness to accept what was before their very eyes that actually caused their own extinction. You have to understand that the belief systems and the perceptions that the Native American Indians decided to fall into predestined them to extinction. It was just karmic that it happened to come through the Caucasians. Okay, and this it's very interesting because when we begin to look at the destiny and the future of the African, we have also set ourselves up in the same position. So when we begin to see a fertilized egg multiply as it first develops, and if you put all these different levels of animals zoologically together as far as their ovum development, you cannot tell the same at a particular stage until that ovum develops beyond that point or either it will actually develop into that particular animal. So you have to understand how awesome that is because that means in here, you know and have the capacity to actualize any particular activity that any animal on this planet can execute. You've got to understand that and you have to understand then where those cells, that information is logged into your brain. Because when you understand where it is in your brain, once you're able to actualize the thought, you can activate that part of the brain to allow you to experience and execute that particular activity. So obviously Magic Johnson and all these other people that have these great feats, they can leap around like, um, what are those called, uh, praying masses and et cetera. That's all part of actually the structure that's prevalent and present in their brain. This is no just, you know, haphazard thing that they have. This is quite physiologically present, 
but there's something known that's very interesting that's known as conscious and unconscious, um, how can I say, mastery or competence, okay? We can be unconsciously competent and it's our responsibility to be consciously competent, okay? Because unconscious competency comes from the right brain, okay? However, when you are asked to elucidate that step by step at the same degree and the same state of accuracy, unless you can identify each stage and then impart that to your left brain, your degree of competency will vary. Now, so you have to understand what I'm really describing because what I'm really describing to you is a feat of left and right brain hemisphere integration that is common in the Orientals. That's their capacity. They have the capacity, once they are exposed to something intuitively, to be able to understand precisely left brain-wise how that was created and reproduce innumerable reproductions that only they can really tell you what the original is. And that comes from integration of the left and right hemispheres through the corpus callosum development and a few other neurologic areas that have become developed because of their cultural lifestyle. So brainstem is reptilian. So whatever a reptile can do, you can do. Now see, that's awesome when you recognize that that's not even in your head yet. We're talking about brainstem. We haven't even gotten into the brain yet. Okay. Now it's very interesting when you begin to also notice the reptiles because the reptiles primarily stay by themselves. You do not see reptiles together except for two reasons. For defense and mating. Okay, so we understand then what the behavior, the personality of a reptilian personality is going to be. Okay, and that's awesome. What does the state of consciousness of the reptile deal with? What is safe and what is not? Those are the two main perceptions that determine their entire life. I see, that's awesome. Okay, because that lets me know that when I go to visit somebody's house and it has more locks and grids and things on it, okay, than Fort Knox, I automatically understand what level of brain function they're primarily actualized in and where they are stuck in what circuit. Okay, this is awesome. And what's so interesting is that they have also identified substances, chemicals, that will actually keep you in these particular states. Okay, 